Can everyone hear me? Yes? Okay. Uh, so my name is Allison, and I am an RA in the Ecology House, which is one of Cornell's program houses. And today I'm going to talk about all the program houses that we have on campus. Um, I have actually lived in Eco since I was a freshman, and I'm a huge fan of the program house concept. Basically, they're small, tight-knit communities um, with a common theme. So here you have um, all of them that are located on North Campus. You can live in them freshman through senior year. Um, Luego is the American Indian themed house, but you do not have to be of Native American heritage or descent to live there. Uh, and they have really cool programs like um, the regional powwow, uh, I know that they go and sleep in a traditional lawn house every year, things like that. Um, the college house, my personal favorite. We have 96 residents and we all come together because we are interested in either conservation or sustainability or some aspect of the grand course. Uh, you can be any major to be an eco, there's no requirement. Um, and we do fun programs like hiking and camping, sustainable cooking, things like that. Hilk is the International Living Center. Uh, you, it's, you do not have to be an international student to live there. It's interesting because it's the only uh, program house that is open over winter break. So if you are from a different country, you don't have to return home. If you have extenuating circumstances, you can stay in your dorm. Uh, you can also apply to stay over winter break even if you don't live there year round. Uh, and they have really cool programs, like every week they have a country or culture night, so a resident will uh, present about where they're from or a part of their heritage, and people come together to learn about that. JL, just about music. Uh, they're pretty cool. They have a concert stage, a recording studio, practice rooms, open <laughs> mic nights, um, uh, everything you could think of uh, related to music. You don't actually have to play an instrument or be a musician to live there. You can just have a passion for it, uh, which I think is very interesting. The Latino Living Center. Again, you do not have to be of Latinx heritage to live there, uh, but they do celebrate everything um, Hispanic and Latinx. Uh, they also work with uh, the um, Latino uh, studies group on campus. Um, they're they have a couple of really cool programs, like Dia de los Muertos, which actually they're co-programming with ECO this year, which is exciting, um, and a weekly discussion series called Café con Leche. McClue, the Multicultural Living Learning Unit, uh, they are similar to Hilk. Uh, they celebrate the diverse and inclusive nature of Cornell's campus. You can be of any ethnic, um, uh, any, any ethnicity, any culture, any heritage to live there. Uh, Risley is the residential college that's programmed on all the arts, not just music. Um, they have, I'm gonna, I had to make a list because it's pretty impressive, an 80 seat theater, a multimedia studio, a record studio, a print shop, wood metal shops, art studio, dark room, video editing studio, sewing shop, and a pottery studio. They also have a dining hall in the building, which is very convenient during the winter. And again, you can be of any major to live in that building. You don't actually have to identify as an artist. You can just really appreciate all the artists around you. And Ujima is the residential college that celebrates the heritage of black people in the US, Africa, and Caribbean, and other regions on campus. Uh, what impresses me most about Ujima is they have a really strong alum network. So after graduation, you get hooked up. It's nice. Um, Here's some pictures of things. This is Aguego. I think it's a beautiful building, personally. Um, uh, okay, that's huge. Oh, also, we have the Language House, which is a program house in the West Campus Housing System. If you are in a language department at Cornell, if you're currently taking a class in a foreign language, you can apply to live or be an out-of-house member in the Language House. Um, and that goes, actually, for all of the program houses on North Campus as well. You don't have to live in the building to be a member. You can apply to, do, to be a member out of house. So if you're interested in living one next year, I would highly suggest that you apply to be an out of house member this year because when the housing selection comes around, they will give you preference if you've expressed an interest already. And the housing process can be a little competitive.
Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Do I need the mic or do I need the mic? Mic? No? Yes, people? <laughs> mic, okay, cool. Um, Hi guys, I'm Sadat. Um, I'm a senior living on West Campus, so I hail from William Keaton House, arguably the best West Campus house, but you know it's always in contention, so we can't really say anything about that. Um, this is my third year living on West Campus, my second year on staff, so I'm an SA. SA is short for student assistant, pretty close to being an RA, uh, but there are some minute differences. Um, so how many of you guys want to live on West Campus? Show of hands. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So <laughs> West Campus is a fantastic place to live. You have a lot of access to a lot of resources. Um, but the first thing that we hold highest is a living learning community. Um, one thing that a lot of people don't recognize about West Campus is that we have the ability to interface with a lot of really fantastic staff, professors, faculty, all across Cornell campus. Um, one of the really exciting things that ju just did last week um, last weekend, rather, was um, go beekeeping with um, Marina Cayo, who's one of the leading um, researchers in entomology. I don't know if you guys have ever taken a class with her. We went, went to her house, did some, did some beekeeping events. She gave us like honey for her house, which is dope. Um, but other than that, those are the kind of everyday experiences that you get access to on West Campus. Um, so West Campus is made up of a house professor. So each West Campus house, Beta, Becker, Keaton, and the rest, will have one house professor Who's the, who acts as the dean. Um, right under that would be the assistant dean. My assistant dean is here today, Cheryl Mauricio. She is a fantastic, she's a wonderful person, um, dealing in student affairs, really making sure that the house runs and everything goes according to plan. And then um, there are six graduate resident fellows, so acting similar to how uh, RAs and SAs would, but these are graduate students, right? So they're in SEPA, they're, they'll be in, they would be in any graduation, like graduate level Cornell program. And then there's <laughs> us, the undergraduates who serve as your mentors, um, your support network whenever you're on West Campus. Um, there are 30 faculty members affiliated with each house, known as House Fellows. So the professor that I went uh, to go see last weekend, uh, she was a House Fellow for Keaton House. All the prof a lot of the professors that you know um, might be a house, prof a house professor for, or a House Fellow for one of the West Campus um, housing systems that are out there. So. Um, Pizarro, I think, teaches uh, Psych 1101, right? Right? Yeah? Um, so he is, he is a house fellow for one of the houses on West. All the really awesome professors, you get to meet them at dinner, they get to come around, come talk, they come talk to you, give you really good insight into what their lives are outside of school, which is really nice to see. Um, and each house has a well-funded student-run house council. And one of the really nice things about West Campus is that you have funding to go and do things that otherwise you wouldn't be able to do. So in the name of education and pushing our boundaries and expanding our horizons, we get funding to go and do things such as beekeeping, such as seeing Esperanza Spalding, which we did um, last night, such as going to a museum and under, like, understanding the nuances of what's being displayed. Um, these are all things that you guys can all have access to as a part of the West Campus community. Um, on top of that, every West Campus house has its own library, its own game room, TV room, uh, music, uh, like music practice room, ours has a drum set in it. Um, uh, and every West Campus uh, main house has its own um, cafeteria that's located in the basement or on the bottom floor. So whenever you're hungry, instead of like trudging through like the snow to get to a pallet, even though you guys wouldn't know that because it hasn't snowed yet, but when it does, you'll know how bad it is. You'll be so thankful that you live in a house where you can just put on slippers and just like walk right downstairs. It's fantastic. Our chefs are like award-winning chefs. Chef Mary, who's um, the keen house chef, is fantastic. He's awesome, and you'll really never regret living on West. Um, and we have a guest suite, so occasionally we'll get to bring in really like exciting people who have different backgrounds, um, multidisciplinary from across the world who get to live inside of the in Keaton or any other West Campus house for a certain amount of time in which in which case you get to inter, uh, interface with them you get to understand what what they're doing what their work is and it's really really cool um, other than that there's there's so much programming that goes on in every West Campus house that it's impossible for me to go through them all and really we give the agency to you guys whatever it is that you guys want to push and go through that's the kind of programming that we reflect in our, um, in our West Campus housing. So every night there's always something going on and it, it works as a complement to you as a Cornell student. Um, I really, the, the selection process is a little bit nuanced, um, so I'll open up to questions afterwards, but yeah.
All right, I'm just holding my hand. Um, but I'm not getting it. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, my name is Alyssa. I'm an RA, a first year RA for Sheldon Court, which is in the which is in the College Town area. Um, we're actually trying to get a South Campus logo thing going, but uh, for now it's called <laughs> for now it's College Town. Um, College Town is really awesome because we're kind of that off campus community that's that is technically on campus, but the cool thing about that is we're right in the center of everything. So you're literally about 10 minutes, if not less, from central campus. So you can get to your classes quickly. Um, you're also right about 10 minutes, 15 minutes away from downtown. So because of our downtown, I think I should say, and there's so much culture, um, and not only on Cornell's campus, obviously, but also in downtown. And because of our proximity to that, there's a lot of programs and stuff that go, that we do that, um, that also include the uh, community, the, the community. So um, I know a lot of our RAs do um, go to Apple Fest, and we are really into um, into the streets as well, which you'll find out, you know, if you're here, and hopefully you are. Um, so we have traditional residence halls. I'm in uh, Sheldon Court, as I said. It's about 164 students in there. Um, the cool thing about uh, Sheldon Court, Cascadilla, Schuyler, it's catered to upperclassmen and transfer students. So um, transfers are considered first year. I was a transfer student and you know sometimes I feel a little overshadowed but we are first year and we you know deserve our light. So um, yeah so there's a lot of transfers and upperclassmen and that's really cool because not only do the transfers get a chance to meet other transfers within the community but there's also those upperclassmen who can kind of you know help them get their footing in to the Cornell community. So um, with Sheldon Court, it's a very laid back, more mature atmosphere. There's about five floors um, for residency. Uh, in the basement, we have a laundry room, piano room, we have small study spaces, and on each floor, we actually have a lounge, an open lounge and a kitchen that allows for you know community events or just hanging out and people getting to know each other. Um, and that's right next to Shorts Performing Arts Center. So a lot of the theater productions that go on, we get free tickets or discounted tickets, and we'd like to take our residents there, that's cool. Um, right next to us is Cascadilla Hall, um, that's about 366 students there. Uh, it's one of our older um, residencies and it's also really cool. Um, I think what really makes Cascadilla besides its residents are the RAs. Um, they're really into making these amazing programs that get all 300 plus students together, um, whether it's through, like I said, going to Apple Fest or just creating our own inside programs, whether it's a movie or just some um, talking, debating about things. And our RHD is also located there, as well as the um, mail service center. So Cascadilla and Sheldon all get their mail in Cascadilla. So just a little info. Um, uh, what's next? 112 El Edgemore, so that's near West Campus. There's only uh, 20 students uh, that live there and one RA. So it's a very tight-knit community that um, goes there, but they love being there. They get to know everyone within the first couple of weeks, and it's awesome. One really cool event that College Town as a whole puts on every year is um, Nightmore on Edgemore, And it's coming up October 29th is the plug that <laughs> I'm putting in. Um, so it's really cool. All the RAs get together. We also have our active citizens, anyone else who's interested, and we put on this awesome haunted house in Edgemore. I mean, it totally gets transferred formed and it's just a really fun way to get not only the college town community involved but also the rest of Cornell because we get a lot of people that go through there and I know I like getting well no I don't like getting scared I like scaring people so it's fun <laughs> it's fun for me you know when you're on the other side um, yeah and our last and lower college town Skylar House is about a 15 to 20 minute walk from uh, Central Campus or from College Town and that's about 125 residents a lot of people typically um, think that it's not the best thing because it's far, but it's actually so rich in culture. And again, it's one of the smaller houses that we have. And because of that, there's such a great community there. We really make sure that everyone is, is um, included in our community. And we actually have um, a lot of food programs and stuff that go on there where we kind of, not force, but you know, encourage people to go down there and get to know that area as well. So it's really cool. And like I said, the proximity to not only Central Campus, but downtown Ithaca, as well as College Town itself, which has you know so much food and great restaurants and stuff, really makes College Town its own little unique home. So uh, yeah, thank you. Oh. Hi all. My name, is, my name is Tenia. I'm a part of the Water Margin uh, Cooperative, and I'm going to talk to you about the eight co-ops which we have in Cornell. And uh, each house uh, is, they're close, they're, they're, they are equally spread through <coughs> north and through west, so uh, you're up, it's up to you 
Where do you want to live? Each house is extremely unique in terms of layout, design, uh, amenities, size. We go from 10 to 35 to 35 people, and each house is its own community. Because the really cool thing about the cops, it's your house. There is uh, there is uh, as little over like overhead supervision as the university can afford. Because uh, the whole point of the, of the cooperative housing is to give the agency to the student and allow the students to, li to, to live our lives in our communities and to learn how to manage our houses and our, and our spaces and make the decisions for what we want for ourselves. So because all the decisions come from the students, so we are the ones who do the cooking, we're the ones who do the cleaning, there is a uh, very strong self, sense of self-organization and a very strong sense of ownership. So when you come home in one of those eight houses, you know that, you know that, that uh, it is your home. So, and uh, you get an extreme amount of support as soon as you're there. So if you had, if you had a bad day, there was, uh, Cornell is overwhelming, you're taking five classes and you're failing seven, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and you just get there and you realize that, that, that it is your it, that is your your turn to cook and you go through the fridge and you go hey what can I cook for my house members and all of Cornell is left behind you and what you have is the positive experience that you have with your housemates which are your family so um, so the houses are old they're beautiful uh, I am from Water Margin which is uh, the better one, no doubt about it. <laughs> uh, but uh, so we have state of state of the art kitchen. We have uh, room where our band records right now. We have full on set room with projector. So we have our study room with our enormous library that carries the house history from uh, 1947. And we have uh, the mission of our house which started as a house to uh, include those who were not welcome in other forms of uh, organized living in Cornell. So, COPS started as a place for inclusion and as a place for conversation and as a place to welcome everyone. So, uh, you don't have to be any kind of special person to live in a COP. You need to go and say, hey, I'm willing to contribute to this community and the community will, will welcome you wholeheartedly and will help through anything you have going on. And uh, we, we do, do, do self-organize a lot. Uh, we organize uh, a lot among the cops to have events together. We do have our, our budgets. Water Margin is a uh, nonprofit organization, so we have a really strong tradition of bringing a lot of meaningful uh, speakers on campus, starting from Malcolm X. So, um, our MOSI process uh, are, are open for two semesters, for fall, for fall next year and for spring this year. Our spring, our spring uh, one starts in, uh, in, in November. So if you are keen on not being uh, on North next semester, you have an opportunity to, to do that with the comps. If you're not, uh, we do MOSI in the fall, which is a very relaxed, semi-selective process. Otherwise, COPs are also extremely affordable because it is also our mission to make it open to students uh, despite their background and, and despite your constraints. So it is currently the cheapest place to live in Ithaca, including the dorms and uh, including the, the college town apartments. So I welcome your questions later on. Hey everybody, my name is Natasha. I'm the president of the Panhellenic Council. This is Blake. I'm the president of the Interfraternity Council. Who has a mic in front of him if he wants to use it. Um, so we're not going to go through all of our houses because there's 36 houses in IFC and 13 in Panhellenics. So that would take a really long time. Um, so I guess we'll just go over our favorite parts. Um, so one of my favorite parts from joining a Greek house is the food. Um, so there tends to be about 40-ish students who live in a house, um, tends to be sophomores and juniors, and you know there's a chef in every house, um, and so it's you know a 40 to 1 ratio, which means that you get to know your chef and the chef gets to know you, and if you wake up one morning and you're really craving pancakes and you've got a good relationship with your chef, your chef will make you pancakes. So that's really nice to have. 
Um. Yeah, so some additional benefits of living in the chapter house. Um, when you join a fraternity you're making a, or a sorority, you're making a lifelong commitment to a values-based organization that is not only at Cornell, um, but also all around the world, all around the country with thousands of active members and alumni. Um, so when you're join, joining, you're automatically exposing yourself to a really vast network of both students and philanthropists and leaders and um, both in industry and on campus. Um, I definitely say one of the benefits of living in a fraternity or sorority, um, not only that you get to live with all of your best friends and wake up with them every morning and study with them, um, but I'd also say that in addition to the food as well, um, one of the really cool things about fraternities and sororities is, is that they're completely self-governing. So even if your fraternity or sorority is owned by the university and you live in a fraternity that's on campus, um, you're still managing the house, you're still doing the dishes, um, your chef is the one that's cooking, but you're still managing over 40 um, students who you're living with, and it's a really unique leadership opportunity while you're on the Hill. Another cool part is that, you know, even after you live in the house, whether that's for one year or two years, um, you still get to come back for chapter dinner every week. Um, so you still have this, like, connection to a spot on campus. So, like, when you're an alumni and you come back, you can still, like, walk through your house um, and go get lunch or breakfast or whatever you want to do. So it really is, like, a much longer opportunity, which is really cool. And I would say above all, above all else, fraternities and sororities are really, really enriching living learning environments. Um, the average GPA of a fraternity or sorority member is higher than that of a non-Greek at Cornell. Um, and with that being said, there's always a lot of academic support from older members of your chapter. Um, there's always libraries in all the fraternities and sororities, so you're not trekking on campus to libraries late at night. Um, and there's also a lot of programming initiatives that go on, um, so we want to make sure that our fraternity and sorority members not only know about their chapter, but also the fraternity and sorority community at large. Um, we have a lot of safety initiatives like Consent Ed and Kegas Watchers come and talk to students about consent and alcohol and drug safety. Um, so I'd really say it's a really educational experience for fraternity and sorority members who choose to live in their house. Um, you're not just living there for the social life, but you're also living there for all of the professional and academic and programming and educational opportunities as well. It is nice for the social life. Um, and there, if you do end up studying late in the library, there are lots of carpools going back. Um, and a lot of the fraternities and sororities, even those off campus, have are clumped together. Um, so you're never you know, living in the middle of nowhere. You've got brothers and sisters all around you, which is super awesome. Um, and then a lot of the fraternities and sororities, they just make financial sense for a lot of people. So that's another benefit. And I would say, um when I came to Cornell, I had no intention of joining a fraternity, same. and I know Natasha feels the same way about sororities. Um, and throughout my first semester, I got involved in a lot of different student organizations. I became a tour guide, I became involved in the student assembly, and across all the people I met, um, the most passionate people and the most communicative people and the most compassionate people all seem to be majority Greek. Um, so even though I had no intention of joining and really no desire to even learn about the fraternity experience at Cornell, um, once I met all these people and became friends with them and learned more about the system um, and how much it thrives on our campus and gives back to the community, um, I made the decision to go Greek and it's been absolutely the most defi defining, incredible experience I've made at Cornell. Um, so the last council actually is the Multicultural Greek Letter Council. Eddie, he's the president, he unfortunately wasn't able to be here today. Um, there are 15 MGLC chapters, one of which has a physical house most of the rest of which decide to live together in college towns. So that, again, becomes a group of individuals that you become really close with and end up living with. And if you guys have any questions, both about Greek housing or going Greek, I know there's really two decisions you have to make there. Um, me and Natasha will be hanging around after, so feel free to approach us. Hi, my name is Ruby, and I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about off-campus living. Um, but before I do that, I kind of wanted to add on a little bit about um, the Ujima Residential um, College. It's a little more than just a great network um, after you graduate. Um, I've lived there my freshman year, and it's a great house, a uh, great um, program house to live in. Um, it's centered around the black diaspora, so whether you identify as black American, African American, African, Afro Caribbean, Afro Latina, or Latino, there are um, dozens of programs about black history on campus and off campus celebrating the black diaspora. Um, so it's just a great place to live in and I just want to add a little bit to that um, great definition earlier. Um, but back to off campus housing, as I said earlier, my name is Ruby and I'm a senior um, and I work in OFSIL, which is the Office of Fraternity, Sororities and Independent Living and I am a senior peer advisor 
So a lot of what we do is we provide students the tools and knowledge to go out and look for off-campus housing options and we really um, emphasize educating the students so that, and yes, landlords do try to kind of take advantage of students um, in more words or less. So we help you find um, the tools. So we do have a database on our website, offcampusliving.cornell.edu, um, and based on what you're looking for, the price range, when you want to move in, um, what needs you have. Some students need um, companion pens for mental health reasons. Some students need um, housing with no stairs because they might not be able to uh, use the stairs. So we really just engage what you need as a student um, and try to help you find that living space that accommodates you um, as best as you can. Because honestly, we're all Cornell students and the last thing that we need to think about is where am I going to live or I don't really feel safe in my own home and that's pretty much our number one priority is that you feel safe and welcomed in your own space and we really just and I want to emphasize help you give you the tools to do that. We also provide you budgeting sheets um, if you want. You know getting that big refund back at the beginning of the semester can be very overwhelming and I can understand that you might be tempted to do a little spending so we really help you um, really engage what you need to do. Um, does the landlord cover water? Or is that on you? Are you covering electricity? Or is that covered by your landlord? What about Wi-Fi? You know, we're so used to the luxury of having Red Rover and Edgy Room, we don't really, really think about buying internet and Wi-Fi. So we really help you lay out some of the smaller details um, in, in um, setting up your apartments or townhouses or however you so choose. Um, finding roommates is also something that um, students often struggle with because you don't realize that I actually can't afford this $1,200 apartment. I need a couple roommates. Um, so we also have a listserv that also um, goes through our office. So I connect students with that and I approve it every day. So if you want to join the listserv, um, you can shoot us over an email. We can add you to that super quick and easy. Um, I'm not sure if I'm forgetting anything. Um, Subletting is also something that happens, so a lot of the leases that you might find um, on our database or on ifcurrents.com or in the Daily Sun or just anywhere um, typically are 12-month leases. There are some negotiable and there are some 10-month -month leases, but a lot of the time students end up finding 12-month leases, so you might not be here during the summer or you might not want to necessarily pay rent during the winter, so we help you connect with students who are looking for winter housing and who might be looking for summer housing uh, for whatever reasons and they can kind of take over your lease for you and we make sure that you're doing it in the safest and most legal way possible um, because many things do happen and living off campus is very scary. It can be very scary signing leases and doing contracts and giving large sums of money up front and so we really just make sure that you know we're kind of holding your hand through the process and that you feel as supported as you can because as I mentioned earlier, the last thing that you want to have on your mind with prelims and grad school and um, interviews is your housing situation. So we really just make sure that from the beginning of the year that you're really set up and that you feel safe and comfortable in your environment. And hopefully I covered everything. <laughs> okay. okay. Nicole. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I just want to note, I apologize, this website is incorrect. Um, just notice the typo. So if you have trouble locating the website, just feel free to connect with Off Campus or myself at housing at cornell.edu and we can certainly help you with that. Hi guys. Can you hear me? Okay. I'm Nicole. I work in the housing office. I'm a senior. Um, and to wrap things up, I'm just going to remind you guys about a couple of important dates and kind of give you a, well, an extremely brief overview as to what the actual selection process looks like. So this upcoming weekend, we have First Year Family Weekend, which means you and your family members can come join us here, I believe, um, and learn more about the actual housing process. Um, in November, we have housing Q&A sessions, which are going to be led by Kristen Lopargo. I got that? Okay, Lopargo. Um, and there's going to be two sessions on both days. One of them will be held at Willard Street during lunchtime, and one of them will be held on North Campus, either at Appel or in the Tapkin Center. Again, not a bell in the Tapkin Center or here at our PCC. Um, and then next semester we have the general room selection demos, which are virtual live demos as to how the selection process actually goes down. So I highly recommend that. 
It's very informative. And then we have West Campus information tours and College Town open house tours as well. So you guys will be meeting us at the West Campus locations or at the College Town locations, and we'll be giving you tours of these dorms. Um, all this information, you've been getting it via email. It's actually been posted on the Facebook page, which is Living at Cornell. And you're going to continue getting updates about these things. And then, so the actual on-campus housing process. So it's a two-part <coughs> process. So on January 25th, you're going to log in to the housing portal, and you're going to apply for housing. And then many of you may have heard about things from the housing process from previous years, but things have actually changed this year. So you may want to disregard what you've heard and come to the info sessions I mentioned previously so you get the right information. <laughs> And then, for example, one of the things that has changed is that in the past, when you logged into the lottery system, um, you were assigned a lottery number right after you logged in. Not going to happen anymore. So we're taking a more of a friendship-based approach this year, and if you're looking for a group of people to block with or to live with, you're going to be given, I think it's a couple of weeks or a couple of days to find that group of those groups of people, and if you want to live alone, that's perfectly fine as well. And then within that time span, after those weeks, we'll be giving you your lottery number. And once you receive your lottery number, you're going to actually go into the room selection process in March. And that's when you actually go in and select your room or rooms if you want a group of people to live with. And then the second thing I wanted to mention is the waitlist sign-up. So it's kind of a secondary process. So the waitlist sign-up is open to people who decided to sign up, as in you got a lottery number, but when you logged into the selection process, you did not sign a contract. So you did not choose a room or there were no rooms to choose. And if you, for some reason, don't end up signing up for the housing process, you can be put on the wait list. You will just be at the bottom of that wait list. And I think that's the most important part.